presence. Our guest today is the one and only my friend Richard Elman, the chief at the Noble Group, fresh off that huge investment by the CIC. Hello, Richard. Congratulations. Thank you very much, buddy. Was it? Uh, that's the only thing you can say, right? Is thank you for the money. Was it a hard deal to nail down? Well, we, we spent a lot of time and uh, we put in a lot of work and uh, we were successful. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the main thing. And have they cut the check yet? And what are you going to do with that money? You're going to basically expand your empire further and further afield. Well, the, the, the focus is going to be agriculture. We have a vision uh, to build out uh, a global agricultural supply chain. Uh, we, we, we're looking to, uh, to, to secure the, 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 the food chain on a global basis. We think that it's uh, very important and, and it's going to become more and more important as the years go by. I mm -hmm. think the, uh, the difficulty in growing crops and the world is increasing by three to five percent of the population every year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the, the, the agricultural commodity development is not catching up with it. So I think we have a lot of opportunity there. This is, uh, by all accounts, anything but a passive investment. True, it's a 15 percent stake in the company, including some new shares that are being derived, and also you're selling part of your stake. Uh, the composition of that, I'm just curious, why not all new shares? Why, are you act why would you actually sell down if you see a, a hell of a future ahead for the company? Well, I'm only selling a very small part of my uh, holdings. Uh, it's the second time I've sold anything. I'm, I'm sort of getting to the age where I s need to plan. But most important, I'm setting up a foundation uh, that uh, I, and I wish to engage with all the people in Asia to create friendship uh, uh, and exchange between mm -hmm. uh, the Asian people for better understanding. And I'm just going to give a little bit back of mm -hmm. uh, everything that I've taken from the world. You're, you're talking about your philanthropic efforts here. That's so right. you're kind of pulling a Bill Gates here in, uh, in a way. Is this in any way a step back? from no. your command of the company? No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm full-time committed to Noble as, uh, for as many years as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be in addition, and it will be uh, something I've wanted to do. I think, you know, you, it's not only taking from this world. I think you have to give something back at a certain point in time, and I, I think this stage of my life is the right time to do that. How much of this investment, uh, as I said, it's not a passive investment. They're just, are, is, is there going to be a lot of participation? Is there going to be any board representation uh, by the CIC? How much of a partner are they going to be in this transaction? Well, essentially it's a passive uh, uh, investment. However, we do have a vision to grow out this, the agricultural business. And uh, I believe that they have the same vision and passion that we do mm -hmm. about uh, the, the, the agriculture. And I think we will find ways of working together in that area. This is a country, okay, this is a country obviously which is interested in uh, really securing long-term supplies of right. everything, just about that's, everything that's right. that you do business in, everything right. that you supply. You alluded to agriculture, foodstuffs, the grains, the ores uh, that China will need. So this is going to obviously lubricate those relationships. I mean, the CIC will act as a conduit for you. And this basically opens China, which becomes a big oyster. The noble well, group. well, as I said, the, the focus of this particular relationship is agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we will have a relationship with CIC, uh, but the, over and above that, I think the work has to be done by us. Mm -hmm. So we have to we have to secure our own business and, and grow our own business as we go along. How quickly are you going to spend the money? Uh, do, you, do you have you identified targets for all this, or is it going to be prudent, slow, gradual sort of deployment of the uh, the investment? We are only interested to deploy money where we get a high rate of return. Mm -hmm. uh, the Noble is quite famous for making a 20% return on equity on a consistent basis over the past 15, 20 years. That's your baseline for, 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 your, for the deployment of this, in, the, that's, this, this cash that's, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. And we will continue to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have numerous projects in South America which we're working on. Mm -hmm. And we, we look to South America particularly uh, as, as, a, as the best source of the, the lowest cost production in the world, and we're also developing in the Ukraine uh, a major operation. So there are lots of things going on, and uh, you know, we, we, we have plenty of projects. It's only a question of picking the right one. You've got a lot in your play, plus the philanthropic efforts as well to add to boot. Still to come, we continue our chat, of course, with uh, Richard Elman. More PRC investment abounds. Who's banking on a boon in business at China's Geely Auto? We'll have a quick report on that, and then continue our chat. Well, somebody who made $850 million from the China Investment Corp, Richard Elman, returns for another chat. He is, of course, the chief founder, the brain behind.
the noble group. Let me start off here with uh, somebody who was listening, uh, in, uh, listening very intently uh, to our conversation. And uh, Samuel writes in from China asking, are you looking to increase supply, your supply chain solely focused on grains and oil seeds, China and Brazil? I mean, uh, asset classes and uh, geographical uh, kind of footprints there. This is Sam from, okay. I believe, Shane. We're looking to, to grow out a global business. Uh, the, the cheapest low-cost producer in the world is South America, so clearly that's a huge focus. That's mm -hmm. Brazil. Uruguay, uh, Paraguay, and Argentina. And we have large investments in, in those countries. We're also looking to grow out of business in Argentina, which is one of the last uh, large land areas that has not been fully developed agriculturally. Mm -hmm. uh, but these are all long-term long projects. These will take three to five years uh, mm -hmm. to grow up. But in addition to that, uh, we, we would like to uh, see our business in China expand. We have four assets for, for producing plants in China, mm -hmm. and obviously we would like to see uh, that business enlarged as well. Sounds like LATAM is uh, more cost-effective for you, because you've mentioned that a few times so far. Well, that is it. I mean, the, the, uh, the only other area in the world that is very substantial is obviously the United States, and that's a hugely developed market, and we don't think it's a low-cost producer ultimately. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we obviously go to the area that we think is, has the most sustainability for, for our business. Mm -hmm. And most of our businesses are southern hemisphere, northern hemisphere type thing. So mm -hmm. we source out of the south and we supply into the north. Right. Uh, Asia, not so much on the menu then? Well, of course, we, we, are, we are doing uh, lots of things in, uh, in Asia. We're very interested in developing our palm oil, uh, a palm oil business in Indonesia or Malaysia. Uh, we are looking to put uh, oil refineries and the crushing plants in India. Mm. So, you know, the, we, we, where there's agriculture, and that's every country in the world, yeah. we, we have an interest. Okay? Yeah. But, this, you know, it's a question of prioritizing. We can't do everything at one time. Let me throw another capital kind of uh, setup or ca structure uh, issue at you. Um, this deal, because of the... Um, because of the financial injection, has led Moody's to place you on possible upgrade for your debt, which could mean the cost of funding will come down even further if you do credit placements or that sort of thing. Is the 850 going to, is that the, you know, is that basically, is that your nest egg for a long time to come? Or, you know, do you think there's enough uh, stuff out there that may interest you that may meet your criteria north of 20% ROE, uh, which might lead to further placements or further fund cash calls? Okay. First of all, we are investment grade. S&P with triple B minus, which is investment grade. Mm -hmm. We're investment grade with Fitch. So uh, we, we have investment grade. We're actually in the market. At the moment, uh, for, for a $2.5 billion revolving credit facility, which is an extension of an existing facility, mm -hmm. and probably be one of the larger uh, uh, transactions in the market this year. In, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, you need to get that done, don't you, before? Because everybody's talking about rates going back up and the cost of funding heading north. You need, is it, is well, it, this it is an always ongoing, on you to get it done now? This is an ongoing program. We're always trying to, 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 to anticipate two to three years ahead of what we require and get it in place because the best time to raise money generally is when you actually don't need it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite difficult when you do need it and people uh, t tend to be less, less uh, generous at that right. time. You might, uh, I don't know if you recall, I've known you for many years, we've known each other for many years, mm -hmm. and some, some time back uh, we were talking about at that time maybe a little bit of fuzziness in terms of China's priorities and you know one thing I do that sticks in mind is you, you mentioned that, there, that, that in some provinces there's a bad habit of building roads to to nowhere, showing that there's a certain element of, un, you know, kind of uncontrolled, unfettered development, which isn't always done mathematically in the country. Yeah. What's changed since then? Well, I think that that, that comment was... Uh, this is a long time ago. Three, four years yeah, ago. Yeah, okay. yeah, a we long happened, time ago. Yeah. happened to go on a trip when we went down a highway and we just saw these, these flyovers that sort of stopped in the middle of nowhere. Uh -huh. uh, but, but actually, I think it was the right thing to do. I think it, what it did is it started to develop the interior of the country mm. uh, and clearly... You know, people sort of anticipate the demand and the needs. And sometimes you get overbuilding, but it adjusts itself. It's a question of, uh, you know, of ultimately people just pick up uh, what's available and the country develops. And I think that's where China's going. It's continuing to develop it. Yeah. Clearly, 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 uh -huh. you know, it is, it is uh, going to continue like this. Uh, we, you know, we look for 
extremely high growth rates uh, mm -hmm. relative to the rest of the world. Uh, your talks with the CIC, and I don't, you know, I, I know you. Don't, I don't want to put you in a position of speaking for the CIC as if uh, you're an official spokesperson. Although in some regards, I guess you could be an unofficial one. But what strategically, what was the aim of this? If it was it food security? I mean, you know, it's firmly in the agricultural dimension. This uh, this deal is, is was it a security issue That's uh, in, in, in in the mind of China? Well, I don't know what's in their mind. I cannot speak for them, as you rightly say. Mm -hmm. But what I can say is that the, the the conversations that we had were based on agriculture, and and on a global ba basis of delivering food to the consumer in in, in many different forms. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how it develops. I mm -hmm. mean, we're we're a very ambitious company. We we want to grow the company. We we have a commitment to double up. The company in the next uh, three to five years, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it will it'll be part of that process. Uh, you, you know very well, having uh, you know built your life on the commodity trade, that there are ebbs and flows, there are ups and downs. Uh, your own stock in Noble has uh, seen its ups and downs over the years. Where are we in this whole process? Are we really in this two-decade, as Jim Rogers would say, or better part of two-decade cycle, where it's really the trend line is intact and we're going up? Don't worry about sudden drops in day-to-day -day news. Firstly, we don't worry about the share price. The market will determine what the share price will be. The, the, it'll go up and it'll go down, as you rightly say. I don't watch it every day. I, it's, it's, it's academic. because, But we, what we do is we grow the business. Our business is growing. Mm -hmm. Even today, uh, the physical business, the amount of volume that we handle, mm -hmm. is growing 20% per annum. Right. And we believe that uh, this will continue for many years to come. Okay. Richard, thank you so much for spending uh, time and giving me face time with you, okay? You be well, then we'll talk thank soon again. Richard Elman, founder, chief brain behind the Noble Group.